All right, welcome back. We are going to do ammo today, and I'm doing a lesson plan again. <laughs> that worked well last time. Who knew writing down what you plan to do is actually helpful? Um, we want to limit the ammo and weapons, and the reason we're doing that is because we just added persistence, the ability to carry information over from one scene to the next, and so one of the things that's most interesting to have to worry about is ammo counts. You know, Having to worry about how much ammo you've got left for this level is you know, a mild concern, but if your ammo isn't restocked between levels, then you've got to think much more carefully at when to use your most powerful weapons. Um, adding ammo is incredibly easy. Adding the UI to show you how much ammo you have is much harder. It's also, it's very easy to do that just for one weapon, but we have two weapons. Um, I would like you to be able to see how much ammo you have in both weapons. Like, you might as well just have that information on screen. Um, and uh, the way... I had to think about this because we currently have an inventory that's unlimited. It can, you can have as many weapons as you like and they all just stack up and up and up. And you can't see any of them on the UI. You don't know what the hell you're doing. Um, so we need some kind of limit on that anyway, right? It's never going to be infinite. Um, uh, so I've got two weapons now. There's no on screen information to tell me I've got two weapons. And once there's ammo in each one of those, a really important thing is like, if one of your weapons is empty, that's kind of crucial to know because you don't want to switch to it in a fight and then realize, oh god, I'm out of ammo. Um, so we need a list of weapons and uh, it's not significantly harder to have ammo counts on next to each of those. Um, but what is kind of tricky is if you have an unlimited, uh, a list of unlimited size um, and you want a UI element on screen for each one of those things, uh, so where we have score. Actually, these alarm pips are kind of similar to what we're talking about, like a, a list of things where each one of those um, is a different game object, right? And they're all in a uh, vertical layout group, I believe. Uh, yes, here. Um, and that lets us sort them. That's the kind of thing we would do for a weapon list. But um, we need to figure out first how many weapons are we going to let you have? Because if the answer is like, you know, 12 or something, then okay, our current list-based approach is a good idea, and we need some system for every time you pick up a weapon, it's got to create this UI element. Every time you drop a weapon, it's got to destroy that UI element. Every time you switch weapons, we would want to reshuffle that list because we want to put the, wep the primary weapon down at the bottom. Um, and it's all quite a lot of work. <laughs> so in my practice, I started doing that, and I got quite far with it, and I realized this is just incredibly messy and, and kind of tedious to work on. And a concern of mine right now is that we're at episode 25 and I want this to be about 30 episodes. It might be longer, but uh, that would be a good uh, num good rough place to stop. Um, so I don't want to get lost in the weeds or anything is isn't super important. And doing an inventory list on screen is not really new stuff to learn. So let's do the simplest thing. All of this is leading up to the, my decision that we should just have two weapons. And that is good both from... That makes our code way simpler. Uh, we're going to rip out a lot of code that we <laughs> already have in there, which is, I find, very satisfying. Um, and it's also easier for the player to get their head around, both in terms of you know learning the game in the first place. It's just we have one button to switch between weapons and one button to fire the weapon you have selected. Um, and in terms of just keeping all the information you had about ammo counts and stuff like that, if you have... Uh, when I played with a full list version, I was having, you know, I've got three empty Uzis and two railguns and one shotgun one of which is empty and one of which is full. Um, and even when you put all that on screen, it's actually a bit of a pain to kind of look at it in the middle of a, a fight and then frantically hammer the right mouse button to switch through them. We could obviously do mouse wheel, weapon select, but um, uh, either way, it gets kind of messy. And there's just a certain cleanness to just having two weapons and you switch between them. Um, and, you know, it makes decisions more interesting about which weapon to pick up. So that's what we're going to do. Let me show you how easy it is to add ammo. <laughs> um, you could do this yourself uh, pretty easily because it's just on our weapon behavior we're going to go into a public it's going to be an integer um, int a whole number ammo uh, then when we fire as well as checking whether we're ready to fire like it has enough time passed we're going to check is our ammo greater than zero and then when we fire this so this little loop here just to remind you is for if we're going to fire more than one bullet at once so that's for shotguns that where they fire a bunch of pellets 
we don't want to reduce ammo every time we fire a pellet we want to reduce ammo every time we fire it in general so um, an easy mistake to make is put this inside here and if you do that then the shotgun loses 10 ammo every time you fire it um, and it makes more sense to have it the ammo read out to be a correct uh, count of how many times you can fire <laughs> not a complicated concept uh, so it just goes there and that's it <laughs> our ammo system is done um, actually the last thing to do is um, uh, go through each one's, one of these and you know what let's edit the weapon prefab the, the one that they're all based on um, I'll open that and we'll give because it a new value that you've just added will default to zero uh, we never want a weapon to have zero ammo so let's uh, just put in like uh, 20 there and then any weapons where we haven't set an ammo value they'll at least have 20 bullets so if we ever forget to do that it won't be the end of the world uh, railgun is the main one i want to change i think that should have like five ammo let's see how i get on with that um uzi is going to need a lot because you fire like crazy i'll say 100 maybe 150 uh and then shotgun uh 20 is not bad for shotgun i think I want to do it generous and give it more like um 40. and while i'm here something i want to fix is the seconds between shots and shotgun the rate of fire is very slow for for what it is so i'm going to edit that to be 0.5 instead of 1 so it's going to fire twice as fast um so we can test this although it won't be too super informative because we can't see our ammo count but with the railgun thing actually one one upside of giving that such a tight ammo count is that that will be easier to um to hit that uh to run out of ammo and check that that works okay so here's my railgun i'm gonna shoot that guy that was three shots five and i'm out uh let's see how long the anuzi lasts That's a lot, actually. Oh, <laughs> we didn't even find out because we got to the next level. Well, actually... Oh. <laughs> then I died before I could use it. Well, these ammo counts should carry over. So let's maybe try and check that that works. Uh, let's try out a new shotgun. That feels so much better immediately. Um, uh, okay. I had fired my railgun at least twice, right? So, two, three... Yeah, I got three more shots out of it. So, ammo counts are carrying over and we have both proved our ammo system works and very clearly demonstrated the need for an on-screen ammo count because it's a pain to do it in your head um so uh let's do the, a somewhat fun part next which is design the ui oh uh, i discovered something annoying <laughs> that took me a long time to figure out um why can't we see a ui so i can so I should explain what I just did there, actually. I want to see the UI in the scene view. I can see it in the game view just fine. But in the scene view, I ought to be able to see it. Like things like the score, uh, that should be there. And the way I looked for it, because in 3D, 3D is the wrong view to look at, look at UI in any way. So you click the 2D button there. And then don't worry about where your canvas is in coordinates or anything. You click on something in the, in the hierarchy view that you want to see. You put the mouse over the scene view and you hit F and it moves the, curse, moves the view to it. And it also kind of zooms in or out to make sure the thing fits on screen, which is great. It would be great if we could see the UI. Uh, we can't because it's unchecked in layers up here, which is a thing I just, that's almost invisible to me. I never <laughs> remember that that exists. Uh, so yeah, for whatever reason, the eye is not checked on layers. Somehow that counted as me unchecking water as well. Um, but no, so that's the answer to that mystery. And I want it there because I'm going to design a new UI element. And what i want is i will do another vertical layout group like we have for the alarm panel um so i'm going to right click on canvas and say create empty um this thing i want it to be in the bottom right hand corner so i'm going to just uh hold down control and alt here and click on this corner one that will shoot it down there um that but not only repositions it oh wait hang on I'm surprised to see that it says minus 50 there for its X position. Did I really hold down? Oh, sorry, it's shift. Gosh, sorry about that. It is shift and alt, not um, control and alt. 
So what I should see <laughs> now, I see the logical value, which is 6.3, 6.1 times 10 to the power of minus 5, <laughs> which is, of course, what we wanted. No, we wanted 0. In fact, we don't want 0. We want, we want to give it a bit of an indent, don't we? So minus 20, 20 in from the, the edge. And then it's plus 20 for the y coordinate. Why are those different? Don't ask me. Um, arbitrary. Uh, OK, so our, our weapon information is going to be in here. I want it to be sort of like this size-ish, uh, but this is not going to be the thing that actually determines it. Um, what I want to do, in fact, let's just make one. Yeah, OK, this is just going to be one of them. Um, so this will be one weapon panel, and I will uh, create a image inside it for I want a kind of background on the um, uh, the text for the certainly for the selected weapon you have and this there'll be one background for the uh, name of the weapon and one for the count and I want both of them to um, so this one's going to go on the left I'm holding down shift and alt and I'm clicking on this stretchy one to say I want you to fill the height of the box you're in but I'm going to tell you how wide you should be so it's going to be uh, something like this. Um, and I'm going to give it a color. I don't know. Yeah, I guess we've done transparent stuff before, haven't we? Um, I'm just going to drag this down to get a black and then make it semi-transparent by dragging the alpha down. And I did that now because next I'm going to duplicate it to make the other one. And I'm going to change its anchor thing to be the same thing but on the other side and shrink it like this in fact it would have been smart to create the text first because the text is going to be very similar um, uh, so i may even end up undoing that so right clicking on the the first image i'm going to go to ui text mesh pro and let's zoom in to get a better handle on what we're doing and then i want this text to fill the boxes in so shift alt and this fully filling one uh, I'm going to give it a little bit of a margin, just like five on every, from every edge. I'm going to tell it that it can auto size. It should expand to fill this or shrink to make sure it fits in there. Uh, whenever you check auto size, the minimum value it gives you is really big. It's 18. Uh, I want it to be able to go lower than that. I'm just going to put in zero. Like if it's got to go to zero, then <laughs> something else has gone wrong. Um, and it is going to say something like, like shotgun. Uh, but I guess we'll put it in capitals and you can see how it if the name gets longer it goes like that actually that was a good thing to do because we want to uh, customize um, if it is too long then we don't want it to be ooh, that was a terrible yeah if we could have if we have just one really long word we want it to be vertically centered previously it would have been like that so uh, always good to have tests like that and then I guess we'll just copy and paste this text element into there and its values will be need sending back to what they were. Uh, oh, it didn't actually uh, get nested. So I'll drag it in there. And just hit five there. And this is just gonna say like the actual count. Uh, is it bold? No, should be. Let's make them both bold. Okay, so what we're creating now, this is a weapon panel, and every both our weapons are going to have one of these. Um, so let's call it that, weapon. And let's give it a behavior. Called weapon panel. So the idea is this is just going to be a thing that... Um, it has two jobs because there's two elements to it. One is the name of the weapon. The other one is the ammo count. The name of the weapon, we only need to set that when we first assign a weapon to it. And then the ammo count will want to update every frame. But for now, I just want to create uh, references to the text mesh pro elements, uh, which is going to be weapon name and another one I'll copy and paste to say ammo account and as soon as I write those I'm going to assign them because that's the kind of thing I forget 
And in fact, let's name them here too. This is the name and this is the count. So the text is the text we want to reference there and the count there. And um, yeah, I guess we can get to actually assigning this information pretty quickly. So let's think about what, want, what we want to happen when um, uh, this gets assigned. So when the player picks up a weapon for the first time, let's just focus on that for now, uh, we'll want to tell this panel which weapon it's going to uh, refer to. So in fact, we should create a variable for that weapon behavior, uh, my weapon. Uh, and then the function we'll call will be something like public void assign weapon. And we're going to give it a weapon, aren't we? So we're going to say weapon behavior. I'll call this new weapon just to distinguish it. So on the most basic level, we'll certainly say that my weapon equals, <laughs> I will never finish writing a variable name. I <laughs> insist on having it auto completed. Um, equals new weapon. Oh, this is why you shouldn't put new at the start of your variable names because new is a reserved word and so it will auto complete to that instead of what you want to type. Uh, so at the very least, we're going to do that. Uh, we also want to set the weapon name. This is a text mesh pro uh, component. Uh, so we want to get its text property and we want to set that to a really intuitive thing to do would be um, God, I'm going to rename this. It's very annoying that, <laughs> that every time I type new, I don't get what I want. Uh, let's just call it weapon. Uh, this would be a very logical thing to write, wouldn't it? But actually, the name, that's the name of the game object. That's what you see in the inspector up here. They look all right. Like, I mean, shotgun variant is the name of that prefab, which is not really what we want. And in practice, it's going to be things like copy of shotgun variant brackets three. So <laughs> that's not at all what we want. If we look on shotgun, the actual like player friendly name is down here on its usable thing, its display name um, on the usable component. So let's get that. So let's do weapon dot get component uh, usable dot display name. So uh, running get component um, is a little bit slow, but we are only doing this once. We're only doing it when we get assigned this thing. We're not doing it every update. What we do want to do every update, I'm not going to set the ammo here because we need to do that constantly, um, or at least every time the ammo changes, and I don't want to get into trying to optimize that. So let's just do it all the time. Um, if we have a weapon, we should check that we do uh, not equal to null, then our ammo count dot text should equal my weapon dot ammo, and we have to say to string here. Uh, this is, sometimes you can get away with just saying a text thing should equal a number and Unity or C Sharp or whatever figures out how to turn that number into a thing. Uh, I think the rule is that for whole numbers, for integers, you have to say to a string, uh, which I'm not going to pretend that makes any sense. <laughs> Honestly, it makes, the, the way to uh, deal with this is, oh, actually, oh no, yeah, is to try not doing it. And if it complains, then add dot to string. <laughs> Um, rather than trying to remember which kinds you can and which kinds you can't. Uh, so that all looks pretty good. And then how do we reference this? How does, let's go to the bit of code we want to change next, which is, I don't have player behavior open, which is implausible, but I'm actually going to pin this. Um, there's a little pin icon next to these tabs. And when you do that, it's going to stay on the left. Uh, that and references would be two good things to pin. And of course, I've lost references too. <laughs> I have no idea by what logic these things stay open or not. Like, there's no way I've used antique behavior more recently than references, right? I use references all the time. Um, so, the bit of code we're interested in is, uh, I guess it's actually on weapon behavior, isn't it? <laughs> Which I also don't have. It's literally selected the least used tabs uh, to give me. Um, be picked up by player. So this is when we would want to tell the weapon panel which weapon it's going to uh, 
work on. And so for now, we could just do this. So we want to type something here to say, hey, weapon panel, I'm your weapon. Um, now we could, the, the, writing a, a, re, uh, a reference here, don't do this because this is wrong. <laughs> I could write public static um, weapon panel, uh, main weapon panel. Problem is, how am I going to assign that? Because this is references. This is a public static class. It's not an object. It's not a thing in our scene. There's no inspector window for it that I can go and drag something into. Um, and so, uh, and I could, so the way we've done it in the past is have weapon panel itself go in a wake and say, hey, I'm your, I'm the weapon panel. But we're going to have two of these. And they're not fundamentally different. They are two different weapon panels. They're two panels for different weapons, um, but they are the same kind of thing. It doesn't make sense for to create a separate class for each one. Um, so I would rather have the canvas reference these. We already have a static reference to our canvas. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that thing I just typed. I'm going to jump to canvas behavior, to control click there to jump here. And I'm going to make it a variable there. It won't be static because that's not what you do on a on an actual object. Um, and we're going to have two of them. So while I'm here, I'm going to set up the variable for the second one too. There'll be a secondary weapon panel. Um, and in fact, doing that now is good just to explain, just to sort of highlight why we're uh, making it on the canvas rather than in references. So now uh, I can go to canvas and uh, the thing I'm looking for is there. Drag that in and we've got a reference to it now. So now in code, uh, when weapon behavior is being picked up, it can just say references dot canvas dot main weapon panel assign weapon this. Your weapon is me. Um, and when you do that, it's going to load in my name. And from then on, you'll know to, to look at my ammo count. I think that's all we need for now. That, I can't think of anything that's not going to work about that, except that there's already dummy text in there. Um, shall I delete that? Yeah, let's delete that. This will just, yeah, look more like what we want. Uh, where am I? Okay. So I pick up a shotgun, and the word shotgun goes in there, and it has an ammo count. And if I fire, the ammo count goes down. Whoa, something very strange happened for a second there. Um, yeah, that all seems good. Uh, let's let's see if I even win this fight. <laughs> Touch and go at that range. Um, let's just see uh, we go to the next level and it carries over. What I want to try is picking up a new weapon and just seeing what will happen. I think it will just replace it, right? Yeah, it just replaces it. Uh, but if I switch weapons, now we get a problem. I'm switching weapons, and the, the thing is still talking about the Uzi all the time. So, uh, we want a another one of these. Uh, before I, rather than just duplicate it, I want to make it a prefab first. We're going to have two copies of something. I pretty much always want it to be a prefab. Uh, now I'll duplicate it. And yeah, I was going to make a vertical layout group for these, but actually it doesn't really make any sense to do that, does it? Because they're so, there's only two of them. <laughs> um, and this is going to be the same. All I'm going to do is I think I'm going to turn these backgrounds off. Um, in fact, here's an idea. I'll turn these images off. We don't want the background. We want, want it to be very clear which one's selected. So it's the one at the bottom and it's going to have a background. And shall I try, I do want dummy text back now. Um, Uh, if I just shrink the whole thing, then that should be quite a clear indication that this is not the highlighted one. Because um, you've got to be careful when you like when you only have two items, it's surprisingly difficult to uh, make it very clear which one is selected. Because you can do things like, oh, there's a black background on the one that's selected. Well, for some people, it might be intuitive for the black background to be on the one that's not selected. Um, but smaller as opposed to bigger is a pretty clear indicator, I reckon. Uh, so we already have a reference set up for the, the secondary weapon panel. Um, going to drag it into there. 
and let's name them in, in the hierarchy as well because it could get confusing. They are the other way around to how they are. Like the secondary one is above visually, but it's below in the hierarchy, so I'm going to move that around just to match that. And the it's going to get a bit more complicated once we start thinking about when when should a weapon become secondary, when should it become primary, what happens when you have both those slots full and you try and pick something up. Um, and yeah, that's about it, I guess. But there, there is quite a lot of replumbing to do at this point. Let me see how I'm doing the time. Okay, about halfway through. Um, yeah, so the player. The satisfying part about this is that we have quite a lot of um, variables and kind of mess to do with weapons. Um, this, The fact that every time we want to talk about the weapon that we have selected, we have to do this messy thing uh, is a bit of a pain. Um, and all of this is based on the idea that it needs to be a list because we're going to keep adding to it. And I think that's a good thing to teach. I think it might have been how we learnt lists in the first place. Um, for any kind of like expansive inventory, you would want something like this. But I think we've determined for our purposes um, to keep the UI simple and to keep the gameplay kind of a bit more focused. We're just going to have a pair of them. So it's going to be a public weapon behavior uh, main weapon and a public weapon behavior secondary weapon. And I deleted the list so that we would get errors everywhere that the list is referenced because we need to change all of those now. So when you try and fire, we used to check how many weapons do you have? Do you have more than zero? Well, now all we care about is, is your main weapon uh, not equal to null? So if you have a main weapon, you can fire. Don't care about whether you have a secondary or not. And then which weapon do you want to fire? Well, we want to fire the main weapon. Don't need a, an array reference anymore. Um, then down here, select latest weapon. Um, I don't think we're going to need that function at all. So I'm just going to delete it. And we'll get another error somewhere else <laughs> where that's being referenced. Now this one, this was quite a complicated thing. We change weapon index because we wanted to cycle through it. Like you're going to the next thing in the list, but you might have gone off the end of the list and you've got to go back to the start. Um, uh, this entire thing is going to change, but uh, one of the ways it's going to change is we don't need to pass in an index anymore, right? We only have two weapons, so it's going to be switch weapons, and we don't need any information. We just will just tell us to, to switch. Um, the selected weapon index is no longer a thing. We don't do that anymore, uh, so we can delete all of that. Uh, we don't need to loop through a list anymore because we don't have a list. And then we are going to do something like this. We want to set one, one weapon to be active and one weapon to not be active. But um, uh, we don't need to worry about that just yet. I'm just going to leave those two lines here to remind us that that is a thing that we do still need to do. Um, but I'll comment them out because they are currently uh, invalid. So. Actually, isn't this, this is pretty straightforward, isn't it? So at the very least, we're going to do, when you switch weapons, the, um, no, let's, let's not do it yet. <laughs> there is, it just gets a bit complicated to, to write some of these things. So yeah, when we hit right mouse button, we're just gonna call that switch weapons thing. Um, and then the, the, all of the new logic, the sort of, um, the actual stuff that's like, gameplay uh, relevant that we need to think about is what happens when you pick up a weapon. So right now the weapon behavior does everything when you pick up the weapon. Um, and we don't want that. I'll delete this reference to select greatest weapon because it won't be uh, relevant. But um, we do want a new function called public void uh, pick up weapon. And it will be given a weapon behavior Um, yeah, and so the reason this is we need to think about this at all is um, if you have no weapons and you pick up a weapon, the weapon you pick up should be the main weapon, right? So let's write that down. 
or if we have um, if our main weapon is null in fact that's all we need to check isn't it then um, main weapon equals weapon uh, so that's the simplest thing and that would replace I'm just looking at this. Okay, yeah, so we haven't, I forgot, we haven't played the game since we made this this main weapon change. Um, so uh, let me just think about where we're going with this. Uh, this reference to the internal list we can get rid of because we don't have a list anymore. Um, it's this part where the weapon goes and gets a reference to the canvas and to the weapon panel and assigns it there. This is a bit above its pay grade, actually, isn't it? The, the weapon behavior should not be deciding whether it is a we main weapon or not. Um, we should uh, defer to the player on that. So what we're going to do is say references dot the player uh, pick up weapon this. So the player is going to pick us up, and then this is that method. And if we are making us the main weapon, then sure, we do want to assign us to the main weapon panel. Um, I, I hope this isn't getting too confusing because uh, I appreciate we're sort of ripping out a lot of the guts all at once. There isn't really a, an easier way to do this. Um, the That little test we did where we, we got one of these panels working first is, is the only part of this I can think that we can do like one at a time, like just do that and get it working. Uh, sometimes in code when you refactor something you break a lot <laughs> and it's a while before you have it all fixed again. Um, so that looks uh, all right for that one scenario. What happens if if we if main weapon is not null? So I'm going to label these because we don't want to lose track of them. We don't have a main weapon. Uh, use this new one. Makes sense doesn't it? Uh, we do have a main weapon. So if we do have a main weapon, then the next question is, do we have a secondary weapon? Because if we don't have a secondary weapon, then this one we picked up should go into our secondary slot, right? Uh, secondary weapon equals weapon. And all of that, but for secondary weapon panel. Um, so I'll write that out. We have, let's just say, there's there's nothing in the secondary slot. Put it there. Is that what we want to do? <laughs> um, we do already have a main weapon. There's nothing in our secondary slot. Uh, Let's see how that feels, <laughs> and we can change it later. Because the other way we could do it is, if there's nothing in the secondary slot, your main weapon goes into the secondary slot, and you, the new one becomes the main weapon. Um, but let's see. So this scenario is we both slots are already full. So we already have two weapons. We just try to pick up another one. Uh, what do we want to happen then? We want the... Uh, new weapon to become our main weapon. I'll write it out in comments first. The new weapon becomes the main weapon. Drop the old main weapon. So this is um, a this is how it works in like nuclear throne um, and a lot of kind of quite actiony arcade games if you can take up new weapons is you uh, when you use a weapon and you don't have room to pick it up, you drop the weapon you're holding. And that means, because you can also switch weapons, you can decide which weapon to drop. There's a pretty good argument that you should drop the one that you're not holding, because, you know, it, like, it would be a fair guess that the one that's in your hands is more important to you than the one that's in your backpack or whatever. Uh, that's tempting to try, but I think it's just a pretty well-established convention that you switch with the one that's in your hands. Uh, that's in so many games, and that's probably going to be the player's expectation. And I always think you should 
you should just go with that unless you have some really good reason to try and <laughs> buck the trend. Um, so we want to drop the, the old main weapon and make the new one um, our main one. So one of the things we're going to do is, is something like this. And I don't want to copy paste this code because it's two different lines. I don't want to have to remember to change it in both places. So instead, we're going to have a, um, uh, a void function that is uh, set as main weapon. Give it a weapon behavior. And it's just going to do these two things. And in fact, because I've used the same variable name, uh, I don't even need to change the code at all. So this is just set as main weapon. Uh, and let's write that there. That won't be all we need, but it's a good start. And obviously we can have the, the same thing if I do set as secondary weapon. I don't know how many times we're going to use that, but just for symmetry, we should have it. Uh, so that's exactly the same code. We're not doing anything new. I just wanted to make it a function because now we're using this one in two different places. Um, so we probably want to do this in the other order. We probably want to drop the existing main weapon first because after I set this as my main weapon, I no longer have a reference to the old main weapon. So let's just go to drop to weapon behavior and at the bottom somewhere, we'll do a public void drop. And it doesn't need to do anything just yet. I just want to be able to reference it. So uh, main weapon drop. So we've already checked we do have a main weapon and we're going to tell it to be dropped. Uh, then we are going to set our new one as the main weapon. So our secondary weapon won't be affected in this case. Um, and all we need to do now, we are going to leave switch weapons till later, um, is to uh, figure out what needs to happen when a weapon is dropped. So a few things need to happen. The main one is I want it to be on the ground um, rather than attached to the player. So transform.parent equals null. So previously we were our parent was the player, we we're attached to them. Now we want our parent to be nothing. Um, trying to remember what else needs to happen to this weapon. Um, one of the things that happens when it gets picked up is that um, it's usable. Do you remember usables? These are the things that, that we use um, with the E key. Um, when we use them, they disable themselves. Unless we tell them otherwise, they disable themselves. And weapons in particular, we wanted them to be disabled when you pick them up because when you once you're carrying a weapon, when you hit E, you're not going to want to use the weapon you're already holding. While you're holding it, it should be turned off. But when you drop it, you want to be able to pick it up again. So let's get, sorry, get component usable and we just enable it. Turn that back on. Uh, that might be it for dropping. And if it is, maybe... We have enough to test now. We will hit problems, I believe, but we can try it. Wow, not a crash on startup. <laughs> okay, so I pick up a shotgun. Uh, de definitely shouldn't pick up a second shotgun because I want to see what happens. Yeah, I picked up the railgun. It went into my secondary slot. Uh, oh, one, <laughs> one thing that's happening is they're both active, aren't they? <laughs> In case you can't see that, I'll just zoom over. Um, both the uh, the railgun and the shotgun have remained active because, yeah, when we we correctly assigned them, so back in game view, we can see they've got the ammo counts and the names in the right places. The shotgun's the primary and the railgun's secondary. Let me check what happens when I fire. Yeah, that's only the shotgun firing. It's not the railgun, uh, so that's good. Uh, but they're not turned on or off. So I will fix that, but let's also see if I can pick up the shotgun as well. No, I wasn't quite quick enough. <laughs> oh, and of course switching does nothing. And I died. <laughs> Let me see if I can set it up so that I can pick up... I'd love to pick up one of each weapon. In fact, let's... This will be useful uh, in general. 
if I open up level one and I go to its config, um, let's give it a lot of weapons. Whereas num fraction of plints to weapons, that's what that, that is, right? So I could just say zero for now. Wait. No, I, I really need to know what that variable says. <laughs> I can't. Uh, I thought you would tell, you, tell me on mouse over or something. Fraction of plints to have antiques. Okay, yeah, so that is right. I do want to be, that to be zero. It's annoying that, that you can't see anything on mouse over. Dragging it would change the number, which is not what I want. Um, but if I get back to startup, that should help to get in a situation where I can pick up three weapons and see what happens then. Because I just want to see the, where the dropping works. Uh, so I can pick up two without setting off the alarm, and it's when I pick up the third. Okay, shotgun got dropped. Now, ooh, did it disappear? I need to get oriented now. <laughs> God damn it, where was it? Uh, it was up here, right? I think it got deleted. And I wonder why. If when a plinth locks, it can delete stuff. Um, but I didn't think it did that. It destroys my usable. But when you pick something up, Surely we unassign that, right? Don't we? <laughs> I'm surprised because um, when we lock, oh, we check whether the my usable is enabled. Um, so we still have that reference. Interesting. Well, there's quite an easy fix for that, I think. Um, so our logic back then was the way we check whether the player is carrying our weapon. We don't want to destroy our weapon if they're carrying it. We just check whether our usable is enabled. And like I say, when you pick up a weapon, its usable is turned off so that it, the player isn't going to interact with it again. Um, really, I think if our usable is already gone, um, if my usable enabled equals false, uh, then my usable equals null. Forget we ever had it. If if it's not usable anymore, probably because the player has picked it up, it's, it's no longer ours. I think that should fix that. And then once this gets to here, it would fail that check. Yeah, that should work. Uh, so the dropping did work other than that. That was the only issue there, I think. And yes, let's fix the, the thing where we pick up the, all the weapons we picked up are stay enabled. So that is something that we should change when whenever we set something as a secondary weapon, we should um, set weapon dot game object set active false. In fact, this is the this is from the switch code, isn't it? That's what that was that used to do. Um, now we want to do that anytime we set something as a secondary weapon, which is something that happens sometimes when we pick up a weapon, uh, not just when we hit the switch key. And if we're setting it as the main weapon, we want to make it game object active true. So yeah, that should be true in all circumstances, right? If we make something our main weapon, we want to see it. <laughs> and if we make it a secondary weapon, we want to hide it. It's in the backpack. So if I can, I'd like to check. Uh, first of all, oh, got a crash. Which bit is a problem? Oh, I see. Okay, that's my <laughs> time warning. Um, we are checking whether this is enabled without first checking whether it's uh, null. So I guess we want that, do we? If it's not null, 
and it's it isn't enabled we don't want yeah so we still have a my usable and it's not enabled then it's not usable anymore we want to get rid of it uh, so what probably happened there is my the first time this ran after we pick up the weapon it was probably fine because it was saying is my usable enabled uh, no it's not uh, the player's got it now said it's null and then the next time it ran it was already null and when you try and check the property of something that's null it crashes so we got to check that it's not, not null first when you do this by the way uh, with the the we're checking two different things as long as this one is first it doesn't matter that we're referencing a property of it in this one so if, if it is null it's going to fail here and the code won't bother running this thing won't bother checking it so we don't get the crash if you wanted to sort of be super clean about it you could nest another if statement for the separate thing uh, i used to have to do that in game maker but uh, luckily <laughs> in unity and c sharp you don't have to do that oh. it takes so long to react to me clicking the play button that sometimes i click it again because sometimes it also just doesn't react uh, okay so don't get crashed there uh, when i pick up a secondary weapon uh, they're not coexisting. We can see that. And in a minute, I'll go pick up this railgun. And <laughs> we'll get violently attacked. Um, okay, well, the, the lockdown happened and the shotgun didn't disappear. Uh, there's something else I want to check, though. Oh, yeah, so I can't switch weapons. I've only got two shots left for the railgun. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. I will want to go over and see if I can pick up that shotgun. I can. Uh... Let me check something because I want to see, I want to check that the right weapon dropped. Yes. It looks very gold, doesn't it? Okay, that is a, that is indeed a railgun. It's just really in a strong light, so it looks kind of gold. Railguns are usually dark. Um, yes, cool. Uh, so that is working, I, so I can pick it up again. And it's still got the same ammo, notice. That's kind of nice. And next level transition works fine. Okay, what is left to fix? The switch button is still not working. So um, the obvious thing to do would be to say, what does switch re switching weapons mean? First of all, we don't want to do anything at all unless we have both a main weapon. So if that's not equal to null and secondary weapon is not equal to null, that's the only time we want to switch. If we, if we don't have one of those things, I mean, really, we currently we have no scenario where you'd ever have a secondary weapon but not have a main weapon. Um, but, yeah, it makes sense to check both of those. And the tempting thing to do is to say set as main weapon, secondary weapon, and set as secondary weapon, main weapon. No, <laughs> not even close. Main weapon. That's really tempting, isn't it? That's a nice, neat bit of code. Uh, it's not going to work, though, <laughs> because after... Uh, let's say our secondary weapon is an Uzi. Um, first thing we do is set our Uzi as a main weapon. Next thing we do is set set whatever our main weapon is to be our secondary weapon. So the Uzi would go into the main weapon slot, then go back out again by the second statement. So when you swap two things, you always need to um, store one of them in a in a different variable. So these are weapon behaviors, aren't they? So old secondary, or should I say old main weapon equals main weapon and then when we set something as a secondary weapon it should be the old main weapon not the new main weapon uh, I think that's correct isn't it and then these are the things that will actually handle setting them up in the, the UI uh, let's move these so that the main weapon is first just for <laughs> aesthetics and then check whether the switching thing works. Okay, pick up a shotgun, pick up a railgun, and now right click, hey, they switch. Um, yeah, and I don't really need to... So I can use railgun to take out the guards, then shotgun to clean up the mobs, that's fun. And then on next level, this is starting to become gameplay. 
<laughs> I've only got two railgun shots, so I've got to think about, do I want to steal another railgun as one of my things, or can I risk going for antiques uh, to get a better score? So I can get three antiques, and then probably I still would steal... I don't see another antique I can grab, so I probably do want to steal the railgun. Uh, oh, you know what? I replaced my railgun... I replaced my shotgun with a railgun. Oh my god, this has gone badly. Uh, now I've got two empty railguns. <laughs> but I can I can run back and try and get my, my shotgun back. Yes, okay. This is potentially still salvageable. <laughs> that guard is real nasty though. Let me let me do a strafing run. Yeah, shotgun's great for these mobs, but it's not so good for the God, I really want to if I strafe, yes. Yes! Survived! Look at that, I had a game experience. <laughs> um, so that is working. I think that's almost it. There is one issue though. In fact, we just hit it. Perfect timing. Um, hey, there's a railgun lying on the floor in this new level. How did that happen? That happened because when I drop something, we correctly unparent it from the player. So it goes from being... Maybe I can even do this. Uh, the shotgun, if I dropped it now, it would go out from, being, from under the player and it would go, no, that was a bad idea. <laughs> I didn't demonstrate my point at all. Um, we, all we do is we set its, uh, its parent to null. We say transform.parent.null. Well, when we do that, it is within this don't destroy on load scene. And it turns out that if you just unparent something there, it goes onto the ground, but still in the don't destroy on load scene. And that means when we go to the next level, it will come with us and we don't want that. Um, so this is a little bit of an edge casey thing because we never told it to not destroy on load but we can't complain too much because we do already depend on the fact that when you parent something to us it inherits our persistent property uh, so we can't complain too much that it keeps that when we unparent it um, because we didn't specifically tell it not to so the way what we want to do here is we want to move it from this scene to that scene and this is a new one on me. I didn't know this, uh, but so I wrote down the line because <laughs> I knew I would not remember it. Um, we'll do it right after the, the parent thing. So we go to scene manager. It's going to complain that it doesn't know what scene manager is. And I'm going to hit alt enter and say, yes, using unity.scene management. Um, when we are dropped, uh, we should set our game object to the active scene. So um, that is the active scene should be the level itself, not the don't destroy and load one. Um, I don't have it as a cast iron fact that that's always true. Uh, if that ever turns out to be false, if we hit a problem with that, then the other way we could do it is to take an object that we know is in the, the scene we want and ask unity what scene is that in and that would get us the a reference but i think get active scene uh, should be fine uh, it's worked every time i've tried it but let's go in and check let's actually for thoroughness let's try and do it on two different levels so if i pick up a shotgun and a railgun and then i pick up this one we will drop the railgun in fact i would rather drop the shotgun um and let's shred these guys with our plentiful rapid fire shotgun and then take him out and i hope yeah the shotgun disappears uh where am i i'm over here having the start positions on the opposite side of the map is not actually great <laughs> it was a good test of our start position system but uh Oops, I'm out of ammo for that. Um, I forgot to drop anything on this level, so this is a useless test. In fact, I'm running low on ammo in general. Yeah, my all my messing around when uh, the way I've generally been playing this game is, you know, just figure out the best moment to attack the guards and not think that much about what I'm stealing. Um, that is a lot less effective now, huh? So switch to railgun so I can replace it with a fresh railgun. And then switch to shotgun to replace it with... To be honest, I like the shotgun a lot more than I like the Uzi now. So I think I will take another shotgun. 
So those are both on the ground. We can see they're not, if I close this essentials thing, you can see they're not in that scene. Um, okay, I didn't mean to do that, <laughs> but here we are. Okay, I've got to actually complete the next level to prove this. This is going above and beyond now to prove this point, <laughs> but uh, let's let's not drop the railgun. Let's just drop a shotgun, and then okay, I missed him completely with that. So I've got to be quite careful now. Oh, it's hairy! It's really hairy. I can trick him into shooting his own guys though. Yeah, that worked. Now, I've actually got to be a bit careful with... 26 is pretty good, actually. But when they get in a nice lateral formation like that, you can get a real nice broadside hit. I didn't do it. Oh, no, I did. I did. I dropped it. Yeah, all right. Great. I proved it works on both levels. <laughs> That's due diligence. Um, uh, so our, our scene method works. So I think that is everything for our UI thing. Um, yeah, I hope that replumbing stuff wasn't too scary. Um, as always, my code will, will be linked in the description, so you can uh, just download mine and, and like check for any differences if, if you missed anything. Um, yeah, my method to delete the variables. In fact, we've got one more to delete, I just remembered. Um, I like to delete variables that I don't, that I now consider obsolete like this one, selected weapon index, we don't need that anymore because that used to be where we are on the list. We don't have a list anymore. And sure enough, we found some code that's still using it. And rather satisfyingly, I can delete all of our start event because there's nothing else in it. All we were doing is setting the, the um, weapon index. And so this should tell us just whether anything, I don't see any red marks or anything uh, in these files. So I'll just run the game just to make sure it doesn't crash on launch. Now that I've deleted that variable, yeah, that's a good way of ferreting out anything you've missed, is just um, delete the variables you don't want referenced anywhere. Yeah, now that we've got that, it will be fun, quite fun to figure out some new weapons. I started making some lists of... Uh, I split it into uh, improvements and expanding. So, uh, improvements, most of the things I mentioned last time. Expanding uh, those little swarming enemies, I think we should have some fast ones and some tough ones so that when they pour in, you, you suddenly realize like, oh god, these ones are going to rush at me and these ones are going to go slowly, but I've got to really chew through them. Um, and some cilia weapons would be nice. Chunks, we only made the, the level chunks that we, we built. Um, there's a couple of types there that I didn't make. Obviously, we've only got really basic ones. Um, yeah, before I finish, I'd better just check through this list that we did do all this. We added a, the, an ammo variable to weapons. We did that. Uh, we set ammo values for each type of weapon. Uh, ammo goes down when you fire, stops firing if you run out. Designed a weapon panel, gave it a behavior, made two, gave canvas references. Um, reworked player and registered to be just two slots. Uh, some logic as to where things go when you pick them up. Uh, some logic for when you press the switch weapon button. And the drop function that moves it to the right scene. That's it, we did it. All right, cool. Um, yeah, next time hopefully we'll do some fun weapon stuff and I actually don't know after that. Uh, we shall see what the most important thing left to do is.